somebody jabikala hallelujah sapa in the iron earth nandi andavre as we wait on your word today let there be heavenly interference today englod pesum appa soondu pona ulangale theetrum andavre vaarthin moolam balapaduthum the word of the lord will quicken our my mind my spirit and my body i pray it will quicken our finances quicken our family lord quicken our children lord you will rebuild our families lord rebuild our finances rebuild lord everything that you uh, see it to be built the walls of jerusalem were destroyed by fire but you sent nehemiah to rebuild i pray send your word to rebuild my life reconstruct my life as we trust in you for salvation for victory and deliverance yesu bin namathinale ketkrom nalla pidave let's give the lord a mighty clap hallelujah god is a good god Amen it's always a revelation that changes is not the logos is a revelation that changes our life amen we come hoping for a new revelation amen for example if the word if the logos can change everybody in the universities would be changed already because professors know more than us sometimes there are historians who are specialized in history of christianity there are people who can you know and uh, religious uh, scholars who master different religions they might know more about the history of the word of god or the bible and christianity but they don't have the revelation of god they will still think it's a book they will think it's a history it's it's a historical book a good teacher a good prophet like jesus but when we believe him as christ as a messiah and i love god to speak to us through his word the word is transforming us and fighting our carnal mind psalm 78 verse 22 because they believed not in god and trusted not in his salvation you mean the israelites after seeing all the miracles the word of god says they believed not in god and trusted not in his salvation we can learn from the israelites today sometimes we ask god why there are so many problems why there are so many uncertainties why is the stock market not predictable why is the housing not predictable why is job market not predictable and even the our life is unpredictable we don't know what will happen tomorrow and when we ask god and one day as i was thinking about it i was asking god why there's uncertainty in every part of life the answer at least what i receive from god is that uncertainty is by design built into everything which means by design everything will be uncertain is by design the earth itself has no pillars no foundations is not resting upon something or rock is very uncertain i mean it is in cosmos moving around the in the solar system in a particular orbit at a particular rate of or acceleration and you can see it is very i mean not it cannot depend on the earth you know we can think oh this is a good church in a good concrete but where does this concrete rest upon on the earth but where does the earth rest on the earth is not resting on anything amen that's the reality science is so clear and it can go into the deep abysmal bottomless universe it can disappear just like an asteroid there are some asteroids bigger than the earth it seems rocks that fly in the space one of them can randomly hit the earth and it can disappear it's so designed certain way that those sometimes get burnt up in the atmosphere some you know get derailed everywhere by the grace of god the earth is still in floating so our uncertainty is built into the design you might say why then why is it like that because i think it's a very simple reason that we will not depend on anything on this planet we should we will not depend on the earth we will not depend on the government everything will be uncertain by design so we can only trust him amen 
We can only trust Him for tomorrow. So number one, trust in God for deliverance from bondage. When the Israelites cried, Exodus 3, 9, chapter 3, verse 9, the cry of the children of Israel, we're going to see that how to trust in God in different dimensions. One is deliverance. Trust in God for deliverance. Nobody can deliver us from bondage. The cry of children of Israel came to me, God says. I have seen the oppression by which the Egyptians oppressed them. You can slightly reduce on the out if it is too loud. So God says, I have come to deliver my people. Verse 10, come Moses, I will send you to Pharaoh, thank you, that they may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So if we are in bondage today, any form of bondage, I think there are many bondages. Egyptian bondage is like you're working and working, building cities and pyramids and uh, for Pharaoh and his kingdom. But the people of Israel remained poor as slaves. 400 years and it in, in crossed another 30 more years. Nobody could deliver them. The iron rod of Egypt was upon them. And Pharaoh even tried to kill the expanding community of the Jewish people. They are becoming too big, too numerable. They are strong, lest they join with the enemies and become enemies of Egypt. He tried to suppress them. Nobody can deliver from Pharaoh's hand. But God came down. He said when the people cried, so is there a hope for us? Is there a hope for people of God to come out of bondage? I think when we cry to God, and trust in his salvation. That's the topic today. Trusting in his salvation. When we trust in him, in salvation, when we talk about salvation, we always might think, okay, salvation of souls. Yes, God saved us from going to hell. That is one aspect or predominant aspect of salvation. But salvation is true, is very general. When the scripture said they did not trust in his salvation, which means they did not trust in the power of God from delivering them. So salvation from bondage. Psalm 78 verse 43 says, He wrought signs in Egypt. You know, in Egypt, God does many, many wonderful things to redeem his people. If God can do in Egypt, can't God do for us? Amen. God can do the same thing for us. Sometimes we don't trust in his salvation. Amen. We look around, we look at people, we look at management, and we might even you know, think that God will not deliver me from that oppression. But God actually did wonders in the field of Zoan. For example, in verse 45, he sent diverse flies among them and devoured them. You know, the flies can be very powerful. But when they come in millions, they can eat the entire state of Texas within a week, within a few days. They came in the middle part of India, I heard a few years ago. The locusts came from Africa all the way, ate up all vegetation. No army can stop them. No bullets can shoot them. They are beyond the, the capacity of these bullets. They can just eat, eat, and continue to eat all green vegetations. So God sent all those flies and these jumping frogs in my, in my house. Now I got so many frogs jumping around. I said, is Egypt coming to my house? Every time I go, some small one is jumping. There are frogs even fly. They jump from here and fly and land. They say, oh, how did, it, how did these small ones you know, fly? I mean, jump very far. I'm thinking what to do with these frogs. Maybe I should collect them, put it in a bag. And they send it to the dumpster. The frogs are annoying. But if, if they're just there, no problem. But the snakes like them. 
So that's another incentive for the snake <laughs> to come around the house. So that's what scares us. You know, if we let them, the snakes will come. So all these frogs were jumping in Pharaoh's houses. Production was destroyed by locusts in 46. He gave them the increase, all the increase in the produce, like rice, paddy, wheat, everything, caterpillar, and their labor unto the locusts. Can God do great things to deliver us? Can we trust God for salvation? Hallelujah. From all forms of oppression. We're not talking just about spiritual deliverance. We are talking about spiritual deliverance and physical deliverance. Everything. Egyptian, well, Egyptian slavery was physical, more physical. But the physical oppression led to spiritual poverty because they could not worship God. Too many times we are thinking about the physical that we don't have time for the spiritual things. The whole day we are jumping into the car, going to office, working very hard, fixing problems, coming back home. But spiritually we are drought, we are facing drought. So basically, if we have too many physical problems, it will lead into spiritual problems. And that's why God said, let my people go. They might worship me. The reason God lightens our burden is that so we can worship him freely. Imagine, this will be the, you know, the biggest uh, good news for me. If somebody says, don't worry about anything. I'll give you breakfast, lunch and dinner and a small cart to sleep. You don't need to work. That will be the happiest thing in my life. I mean, somebody saying, don't worry about food, and I give you a small, you know, under that tree you can sleep, I will immediately sign for it. Go and sleep under that tree. And Allah, you know, so much struggle. Why? Just for breakfast, dinner, and lunch. And these stinking houses that get rocked when the wind blows. And they charge like 500,000, 600,000 for that flimsy wood. If you just push hard, you know, you gather all your family members around the house. If you start pushing, everybody say one, two, three, push. I know most houses will fall. My friend bought a house for 800,000 in California. I went to his house one day. He said, this $800,000 house. He said, this is a you know, cupboard. I pulled the cupboard, it fell apart. I said, what? You bought the house for 800000 It's falling. He said, Henry, yeah, you know, this is a 40-year-old house. What do you expect? You open the shelf, everything comes by itself. That's what happens after 40 years, you know. You can prophesy. The, the prophecy on every house is that it won't last more than 40 years, even if we keep it very nice. Because it's made up of wood and soft structures. But that's what God wants to tell us. You know, we, can, we should move into this realm where God can take care of me. You know, I was in the seminary. That was some of the best moments in my life. Is that the, the principal, the rector will always never talk about money. We never worried about breakfast. Correct money at just apart. They will not talk about problems, financial problems. They'll say you have to pray, you have to play, you go to school. Only three things: pray, play, go to school. Happy, very happy. All my high school, very happy. I never heard about money problems. Rice, dosa, idli, aram say, you know, just eat and be happy. Never knew what's even outside the corridor. We never get newspapers. And we're not supposed to read newspapers, no television, nothing. I mean, just pray, play, go to school. I think almost like heaven. It was like heaven. We think America is heaven. After we come here, we see the real thing in America is you know, too many problems. But I pray today that God can save us, that our trust may be in God. Amen. You know, when God tries to deliver us, he does wonders. The trees were destroyed, the cattle were destroyed. In verse 47, he destroyed the trees with hail. And then in 48, he destroyed the cattle again with hail and flocks with thunderbolts. Finally, the firstborn. 
He brought them, verse 54, He brought them to the border of His sanctuary. Can God take, take us safely to our destiny? I pray that should be our prayer today. God, I trust in your salvation. God can deliver us from current struggle. I don't know how, but he will do wonders. Arpudangle Sevar, Adialangle Sevar, Namudya Visuvasan Katar Melir Kavendum. Amen. We should trust in God for salvation. He will lead us. He led them like a flock. Verse 54. He brought them to the border. And verse 55. He divided the whole land and gave them a safe dwelling. Can God give a safe dwelling? Thank you, Jesus. I pray, safe dwelling. Can God do what he did for the Israelites? Number two, trust God for necessities. Necessities of life, as we already said, God gave them Psalm 78 verse 15, He clave the rocks. For everything God wants us to trust Him. I mean, even water, do not take it for granted. Uh, let's trust God for water. You know, I can, we can survive without, you know, clothes for, uh, we don't need fancy clothes. Uh, we can survive even without food for 40 days, but we cannot survive without water for a few days. Even though there's so much water in the ocean, if that water doesn't come here, and we really can't drink salt water, but without the water, we cannot survive. So God has to supply water. And he clave the rocks, verse 15, 78, 15. Kat paragale he gave them drink as out of great depths, he also brought, verse 16, streams, rivers started flowing from the rock. Can God supply water? Absolutely, yes. Can God supply food? Verse 23, 78, verse 23. He commanded the clouds and opened the doors of heaven. And verse 24, rain down soft food. Amen. Like coriander seed, white manna from heaven. And men, verse 25, ate angels' food. You know, if God can do them for 40 years, I wish we lived in that time. Amen. Light and katre potrare. And on the way, any snakes come, God Himself kills the snakes. You don't need a stick. You know, after my mom came, she said, keep one stick there. Keep one stick here. <laughs> Keep one stick there. We know, we don't know where the snake will come. So I have one stick in the barn, one in the front, one in the back. So I got four long sticks. Because I went to Home Depot and asked, give me some thing to kill the snake. He said, we never do that thing. You only pick the snake and let it go. That's what America, they pick the snake. But in, in India, it's not like that. We don't pick snakes. <laughs> we kill Kill steel, or, or I mean, just kill, kill the you know, serpent's head. So we are not used to picking nicely the snake and gently leaving it outside. Amen. Oh, That's American culture. You know, you go to any any kid in America, they'll say, "Oh, snake, okay. What is you know, no problem with snake? Some people even have it as pet." We went the other day to Indian shop. There was in the car a long plastic snake. Oh my God. In the, in the dashboard of the car, right in front, a long, three-foot, big, green, plastic snake. For us, snake means it's, it's gruesome, it's abomination. We want to get rid of it, kill it as quickly as possible. And God said, I will burn up every snake, every scorpion. Imagine walking through the wilderness. They're walking, the fire is going in front, and burning what? Burning snakes in the wilderness. Scorpions, the dangerous place in this earth is wilderness. You know, like howls and, and greyhounds and coyotes, tigers, leopards. All those animals will be roaming in the wilderness in the night seasons. And that's when God says, let my fire go and burn them up. 
And 40 years they went like that, 40 years. Can God save us? Can God give us food? Can God give us meat? Verse 26, he caused the east wind to blow and by his power he brought forth south wind. He rained flesh. Verse 27, rained malai pondri karigale potaram. In fact, one commentary says that around three kilometers around or three miles around the camp, radius of three miles, there were quails stacked up for them to eat. Three mile radius for these two million people to have dinner. They saw all of this, still they did not trust in God for salvation when they were in the land of promise. Hallelujah. Do not forget that God's supply chain is greater than Walmart's supply chain. Amen. God has a special supply chain, I mean for all of us. His supply chain will not be cut off. We should trust in his store, in his you know, kingdom, in his supply. Because God has all of this. He can somehow feed us. Trust in his salvation. Number three, when the roads are blocked, what do you do? The Israelites were just coming out of that Egypt. And finally, their final, as they were ready to go out, they were blocked by the Red Sea. In fact, it is called, what we call in software, it's called deadlock. They cannot go outside because of the sea. They cannot come back because the Egyptian chariots are behind. So they were locked between a Red Sea and the Egyptian furious, angry Pharaoh's captains. But God divided and made a road, verse 13, Psalm 78 verse 13. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. Which means when there are no roads, God can make a road. It is our doubt that causes God not to open the Red Sea. Karthar in the Sengadale Pelapara. Namandi Viswasik and Andre Priyadu or Kadave Terapar. We cannot be like the Israelites who say, oh, God is not alive today. He won't give me a job. He won't give visa. He won't give anything. You know, he's so stingy. He's very powerful, but to me, he's very stingy. You know, that's how sometimes when we don't have faith, we start put blaming on, the, you know, on God himself. But as you trust God, can God tr open the roads? Every blocked road, you know, if sea itself can divide, how, how easy for God to open another door? I mean, imagine the sea, the Red Sea where the big ships go right now. And then to the Swiss Canal. So even the Red Sea parted. Hallelujah. I pray that we will trust God. The reason sometimes that we don't find any road is because it's possible that we have not, you know, um, trusted in the God who does great wonders. Hallelujah. Can God give direction? Number four, when the wilderness was dark, Psalm 78 verse 14 says, in the daytime he led them with the cloud and in the nighttime with fire. Meaning, when God, when does God, can God give us direction? Economy is bad, can God give us direction? For example, I, I think the reason sometimes we are stuck is not because of talent. Yesterday, as I said, you know, the reason we are stuck is because we don't have direction. We are equipped with talents. We have a lot of talents, especially people from India. We have a lot of talents. But we don't know which way to go. Like, you come to a place, there's a fork, and we don't know which way to take. And I'm praying, this cloud that led them in the wilderness, can the cloud move before us and show us the right way? You know, when we pray to God, God can give us directions. You know, when things are hard, that's when faith is tested. Amen. The wife will say to the husband, you don't know where you're going. Amen. That is true in, in many families. The husband might say to wife, what are you doing? 
We just don't know what you're doing. Sometimes we don't know what we're doing. Because we don't know which way to go. We have time, we have talent, but we have no direction. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Okay, after that, it's not time to go and crawl under the bed. Let me sleep. I don't know where to go. If you have the America flight here, that's easy. Amen. But after we come here, if we don't know where to go, we don't know what to do, if we don't know direction, we don't have directions for life, we'll be stranded. The word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet. So that's when we come to God, sit at the feet of Jesus. Yes, it is very hard, but I know that God is still a God of salvation. Amen. Some did not trust in the God of salvation. He is the one to be trusted. After seeing all of these plagues, all of the division of the Red Sea, still people did not trust in God for salvation. Find out the thing that excites and ignites. Hallelujah. Maybe that God is closing doors so we can come back and find out the right thing that God has made you to live for. If nothing is exciting, it does not mean that your life is free. No, it is, it is, there is something that's really that God wants you to do. So God is closing all these doors. Every day if you are jumping with enthusiasm and fire, you just can't wait to get out of the bed and watch and do what God has called you to do. You know, that is a thing that, is, that God has called you to do, the passionate thing. Until we find that thing, we'll not be happy. It's not about working. You know, work is fine, we go to work, but we can still be very sad. I mean, you can be declared the employee of the year, but still be very sad in heart. I mean, that's possible. We can earn very good money, still you are, you are not ex we are not excited because we are not in that place doing the thing that God has called us to do. And it is very sad that we have to go through life like that. I pray that the Lord will show you direction. For example, King David was bankrupt in chapter 30, 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. I think it is called the bankruptcy chapter. David was greatly oppressed. City was burnt. Ziklag was his headquarters. And the men around him thought of stoning him. 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. This is the lowest point in David's life. You know, he was once called a valiant man. He killed Goliath. Then Saul started chasing him. He went around different wildernesses in hiding in caves. But even then, he was not sad as we think he was. He was actually passionate about God, writing his psalms, singing songs to God. He said, Lord, you are still my deliverer. You will deliver me. I know one day you will make me a king. Hallelujah. Amen. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Do not give up. After 10 years of running from wilderness of Engedi to another wilderness of Zoan, there are so many wilderness, he will sometimes hide in caves, sometimes Saul is chasing him around the mountain, he comes this side of the mountain, sometimes he got very close to Saul, cut off his robe, did not kill him. But this time, in, this, in his early part of his life, you know, one day the Philistines came, or the Amalekites, they came and burnt his headquarters, took all his children and wives, and then the people around him, around 600 people, they said, let's finish this guy. He did not really protect our family. This is one of the lowest points. But what did David do? Verse 7, he said to Abiathar the priest, bring me the prayer cloth, the ephod. Abiathar brought him, and verse 8, David inquired. Inquire means an, another word for prayer. David prayed to the Lord and he asked for direction. Shall I pursue this troop? You know, it's, it's amazing how David will, you know, trust God in everything. Amen. 
you will, you will not find any scripture about self confidence all the psalms he says lord i trust in you you are my shield you are my fortress you are my deliverer you are my rock you are the rock of salvation my shelter you defeat my enemies he was the best warrior still he says no i am succeeding because of you i am very successful i am killing enemies left and right when saul said kill 100 philistines and give their four skins he went and kill 200 he uh, extremely skillful with one stone he can bring down goliath he can kill a lion and a bear as a young boy but he said no 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 the lord who helped me to kill a lion this time he's saying lord i am bankrupt these 600 people around me <laughs> they want to kill me my faithful who my raised who my gave food they were broke people that was people in distress they all joined king david when he was you know building his small army all the people in debt those with drug addicts even you know they they started coming around david because david would give them food so they'll come around and help him and he trained them to become you know mighty people but now suddenly they said ah oh, this man has lost everything and we also lost everything and he asked god shall i pursue this troop and god said god said pursue thou shall overtake so god can god give direction you know we come to a fork in life nothing is moving job is not moving finances are financials are tight children are not responding job said when he was very sick he said i call my children they don't respond even my servant i call hey 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 and he doesn't come the young people they mock me when i was a king king david job said he was like a king in that ancient kingdom everybody would stand up when i walk but nobody cares for me now i'm full of sores and worms around my body but towards his life he said let me start praying he started praying for his friends and god turned can god he said he, he did not give up his faith one thing good about job is that he never cursed god his wife said you curse god and die are you still holding your integrity because you know god has already taken your children your house everything you are still saying god god and he said no at last i will see my redeemer and david comes to god and prays this is a hope for us even if you are bankrupt today I mean he is still the god of salvation. He will do mighty signs, he will do wonders. Wait on him, ask him for direction. God can give us direction. Amen. And that's my point today is that if God is the god of salvation, he is not just saving you, just your soul. He saves, he is a god of all things. Amen. Sickness, finances, deliverance trust in him for salvation god will also give finally victory over our enemies for example when they went out into the wilderness the amalekites came exodus 17 verse 8 amalekite then came amalek and fought with israel in rephidim rephidim is another wilderness and moses said to joshua go you go and fight there are times we have to fight you know red sea divided by itself amen ivar tadi dhan thookunar it god did everything he said do not worry today salvation today will come from him so there are battles which god will fight for you you don't have to do anything but there are some we have to do for example with the amalekites god said joshua he take some men go and fight and moses said tomorrow i'll go to the top of the hill with the rod of god in my hand and he said i'm going to start praying next verse moses aaron and her went up to the top of the hill it came to pass was 11 moses held his hand and israelites prevailed so prayer somebody is praying but joshua was literally fighting this is where our part comes we have a part 
ஆண்டர் என்னை ஆசிர்வதிப்பார் காலையில் நம்ம எட்டு மணி நேரம் ஒன்பது மணி வரைக்கும் தூங்கிட்டு ஆண்டர் நல்ல எந்திரிச்சிட்ட ஆண்டவரே யூ யூ செட் யூ வில் டெலி வாமி பட் த புக் ஆஃப் ப்ராவர் சிக்ஸ் சேஸ் ஓ கோ டு தி ஆண்ட் ஓ ஸ்லக்கட் அண்ட் லேர்ன் ஃப்ரம் ஹிம் a little sleep a little slumber and poverty will come like an armed man so when i read that verse i say no i should cut down my sleep <laughs> amen excess sleep leads to poverty and poverty will come like an armed man which means work like an ant that's what god is saying ants are little creatures but they never stop working they're building something they're building big ant hills even though rain will come and wipe them off they'll again start building little creatures but a lot of wisdom saving for the winter they take rice if there's a hole in your house they'll come through that hole somehow go to your kitchen somehow pick that one rice two rice and if it's too big two three ants will start pushing it they are good for you know teamwork they'll push something bigger than their head bigger than their size 10 20 times bigger than their size they'll push a ball of you know soft food and they all work together you push you push i don't know how they communicate there is no project lead the bible says the ants don't have guide or ruler no project manager no scrum master needed no pmp certification needed they know how to work like teams <laughs> amen and all the scientists they scratch their head and say how these ants communicate we want to put robots in in the moon and we want to build ant colonies they say and we want to see how these ants work if they can work like that you know and we can build some robots they can also work together and build something in the moon that's how the the most bright scientists in america are looking to the ants for ideas amen god said look to the ant for hard work so there are times we have to pray we have to get up and pray amen early in the day jesus went to the wilderness and prayed hallelujah every day he will go and every morning he will go and this is a time to reflect and say lord i want to be a fighter i want to get up jehoshaphat said the choir needs to help me he said second chronicles 20 verse 22 he said when they began to sing the lord sent ambushments you know when we start praising god in the morning i think this air conditioning needs to little cooler make it cooler so when they set up this choir they began to sing and the lord set ambushments you know when you praise god in the morning god is fighting but we have to praise open our mouth and praise god hallelujah jehoshaphat understood that when you can't handle it start singing and praising god and as he started singing and praising god the lord brings these ammonites moabites into confusion they killed each other in samson in judges 15 14 you know samson said lord let your fire come upon the spirit of the lord came and the holy spirit came upon him and the cords that were upon his arms became like small thread burnt with fire and loosed him he took the jawbone of a donkey verse 15 and killed thousand people hallelujah amen when the spirit of god comes we come mighty we need the hand of god the fire of god the word of god and the spirit of god and then that quickens our mortal body you know samson was like ordinary man very lean i think because that's why this delilah keeps on bugging him he said tell me what's your secret tell me what's your secret if he had been a muscular man there's no doubt because of his muscles but he was a normal man suddenly he lifts bars gates and suddenly he kills thousand people because the spirit of god came upon him hallelujah the spirit of when the spirit of god comes he will give you victory give us victory over our enemies this morning i had a support ticket you know i went off to the all night vigil and then i said okay let me open my coffee's computer and suddenly there was something that da- didn't work last night and the guy was emailing me and i emailed to all the team nobody responded then i said maybe there is something called emergency support number i said okay call it i say hey raise a higher priority ticket he said why why he said no no just raise it nobody is responding please raise a higher priority ticket so he raised the ticket and immediately somebody called and then we went into the system and it was solved within like 10 minutes giving me more time 
or you know, reading Bible and praying. God fights for us. Amen. When nobody responded, you know, God gives ideas. You know, God will open doors. God will fight when you pray. The Spirit of the Lord will come. For example, how did Jesus fight the battles? Luke 4, verse 28. They were all in the synagogue. They were filled with wrath. Verse 29. They said, we'll push Jesus from the mountain. They led him to the brow of the hill where the city was built. They might cast him down headlong. But, next verse says, he just went through it. He just went through them, not escape. He didn't even run the opposite direction. I mean, the Bible says he just went through the crowd. Here the people are saying we should push him down. Jesus never fought with hand. Amen. I In our life, we should never fight with hands. In another Nandalame, we should fight on our knees. Hallelujah. Amen. Never fight with anybody in the street, in the office. These hands are not for fighting. He just went through the crowd. You also just go through the crowd. Don't do anything. Just go through your, you know, your company. If somebody is angry, don't, you just don't, don't react. Never get into trouble using hands. Immediately, you know, in America, you know, everything they'll arrest. Tomorrow, I did actually work for, oh, he's, he, he just beat me, which means abuse, abuse, heavy domestic abuse, <laughs> incarcerate him. There are people in the prison just for fighting, just for fighting for 10 minutes, 5 minutes. I, w I go once a month now, not to preach, just to know, you know, what is the state of people in the prison, why they come, one pastor was there. I don't know, because we can't ask why he is there. But he was heavily, now he's heavy on fire. But he was, as a pastor, he did some small things. Another Indian friend from Kerala, he said, uh, they introduced, he said, he's from your, your, your country. He said, okay, what happened? I didn't ask what happened. He himself said, you know, pastor, you know, he said, you know, I have this small silly problem, silly problem. He said, what problem? I drink, I drank a lot. Three times I hit in the, in the car. Three times I was overdosed. They put me here for 14 years. But this is my problem, you know, I'm a, I'm a bad boy, I'm a bad boy, he said. Because in Kerala, my dad, my dad was very wealthy. My, all my siblings were settled nice. I'm the last boy, I was spoiled. I just drank there. I came here hoping life will be better. They got me married somehow, and then they gave me green card, so I came over here. But here also I drank, I'm a bad boy, I'm a bad boy. You know, he, he's, he's smiling and saying that. I said, one small habit. 14 years. And that's why I go there. To just to know what people go through. Because even though I'm older, I don't have much world experience. I don't have experience in the world. So I just want to go and meet people to see what problems they have. And then pray for them. Small fights. As I said long time ago, that all the juvenile courts are, you know, small kids stealing cell phones. Ladies' bags. How much it costs? Thousand dollars, maybe five hundred. They go to prison, juvenile courts, for thousand dollars, for five hundred dollars. They can easily earn that money, McDonald's, within five days or maybe within a month. Never fight back. Jesus just went through it. When Paul was, you know, preaching, 2 Corinthians, we'll just take two more scriptures. 2 Corinthians 11.32, in Damascus, under the governor Aretas, the king kept the city of Damascus with the garrison, desirous to apprehend me. They want to catch me, but, verse 33, through the window, in a basket, I was let down and escaped. Can God save us? Yes, miraculously. He said they just put me in a basket like, a, like watermelon or you know, pumpkin. And then they led me down the wall. I escaped. He didn't fight back. The great apostle never fought back. It's not a sign of weakness. Meekness is not weakness. 
Gentleness is not weakness. Amen. He said, I'll just, I won't fight because I'm a disciple of Jesus. Jesus did not say fight back. He said, show the other cheek. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God fights for you. God will deliver you. Paul escaped through basket. He even says in 2 Timothy 4.17, The Lord stood by me, strengthened me, but that by my preaching might be fully known, my preaching, that all the Gentiles, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. This is, could be figurative or could be real. One scholar said maybe he was put before the lion. But just few scriptures before he talks about Alexander the coppersmith, the coppersmith who, you know, tortured him. He was a, you know, great enemy. Probably he's referring to him as a lion. But the reality is he escaped, God delivered him. Finally, Paul survives the, the conspiracy of 40 Jews, Acts 23 verse 12. When it was day, Jews banded together, bound themselves with the curse. They said, we will fast and pray till we kill Paul, verse 13. And there were more than 40 people. When the enemies come around you, can God save us? Absolutely. Hallelujah. Paul escapes Eurocliden, Acts 27 verse 14. Not long after, there arose a tempestuous wind and called Eurocliden, and the ship was caught and could not bear up the wind. We let her dry. Imagine a ship is going. They said, the captain, I can't do anything. He just left it. He stopped driving the ship. He said, let the wind drive. You know, they said, we can't handle it, let it dry. So he said, let the wind, we let the wind dry. And then it crash landed near Malta. They land in Malta. As soon as he landed in Malta, Paul escapes a snake bite. Acts 28 verse 3, Paul gathered a bundle of sticks and then put fire in it and there came a snake, a viper, 28 verse 3, out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And the barbarian said, oh he's a criminal, he will die fast because the snake, the vengeance will not let him live. And verse 5, Paul shook off the beast into the fire and no harm. Paul continues to roam, minister to Caesar's family for two more years. And he has friends in Caesar's empire, palace. Two more years in Acts 28 verse 30. Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rental property. And all who came to him, verse 31, preaching the kingdom of God, teaching things about Jesus. Nobody can stop him. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. He will save you in sixth and in the seventh trouble. Whatever financial trouble is in the Amatna, we love it. Mapa, we love command every or peri a pade uruakum, just like the sea divided. Kailuti Keklam, God can make a road, Lord, make a road for me, make a way for me. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Kailuti Keklam, I trust in you. They trusted not, Psalm 78 verse 22 says, they believed not, they trusted not in his salvation and that's why they had problems. Thank you Jesus. Lord, I trust in you. Even today, even if the Egyptian chariots are chasing you today, hallelujah, even if the greatest army in the world today is chasing us the creditors the debtors or whatever the collection agencies the mortgage companies if the management is against your work if there are people envy and jealousy he's a god of salvation May God deliver us from all troubles. This poor man cried and the Lord delivered him out of all his troubles. The Bible says all his troubles. Jesus went out and healed them all. Thank you, Master. He's the only one who can heal everybody. Power went out of him and healed them all. The word of God says virtue left him. Even his clothes was so powerful. Thank you, Jesus. 
நம்முடைய தலையை நிமிர செய்வார் the 600 people friends of david said let's finish him off but king david said the lord is a lifter of my head thank you my lord lift up our heads lift up our families guide the kekla you will not go down in shame we will not go down in poverty we will not go down in sickness he will not let you go down He is a lifter of my head. In Jesus name. Kai kala tete padala. Thagapane tandaye dalai nemira seibavanir. Thagapane tandaye dalai nemira seibavanir. கேடகம் நீரே மகிமயம் நீரே தலை நிமிர செய்பவனிரே கேடகம் நீரே மகிமயம் நீரே தலை நிமிர செய்பவனிரே தலை நிமிர செய்பவனிரே லெட் மை ஹேர் லை நிமிர செய்பவனிரே எதிரிகள் எதிரிகள் எவ்வளவாய் பெருகிவிட்டன எதிர் தெழுவோ எத்தனை மிகுந்து விட்டன எதிரிகள் எவ்வளவாய் நன்றி அப்பா சோர்ந்து போவதில்லை சோர்ந்து போவதில்லை தளர்ந்து போவதில்லை சோர்ந்து போவதில்லை தளர்ந்து விடுவதில்லை தகப்பண்ணி தாங்குகிறேசுவே தல்லாட விடமா கைகளை தட்டி தாங்குமப்பா தகப்பண்ணி தாங்குகிறேன் தல்லாட தல்லாட விடமா கைகளை வெட்டி கேடகம் கேடகம் நீரே மகிமயம் நீரே தலை நீரே மகேஷ் இயேசுவே கேடகம் படுத்துறங்கி மகிழ்வுடனே விழித்தெழுவே ஏனெனில் கர்த்தரனை ஆதரிக்கின்றி படுத்துறங்கி மகிழ்வுடன் அச்சமில்லையே கலக்கமில்லையே அச்சமில்லையே கலக்கமில்லை வெற்றி தருவார் வெற்றி தரும் கத்தரனோடு இயேசுவே தோல்வி என்றும் எனக்கில்லையே ஜெயம் கொடும் அப்பா வெற்றி தரும் கத்தரனோடு தோல்வி இல்லை தோல்வி என்றும் எனக்கு கைகளை தட்டி எஸ்வே திருகம் நீரே மகிமையும் நீரே தலை நிமிர செய்பவ நீரே கீடகம் நீரே தலை நிமிர செய்பவ நீரே தலை நிமிர செய்பவ எஸ் லா லிப்ட் சொகார் கலங்க மாட்டே ஒன்றுக்கும் நான் கலங்காம் சூத்தரிப்பே அறிவு கெட்டா பேர் அமைதி பாதுகாக்குதே ஒன்றுக்கும் நான் கலங்காம் சூத்தரிப்பே அறிவு கெட்டா பேர் அமைதி பாதுகாக்குதே விரும்பத்தக்கவை தூய்மையானவை விரும்பத்தக்கவை தூய்மையான அவைகளையே அவைகளையே தியானம் செய் அவள் மெடிடே ப்ராமிசஸ் அறிக்கை செய்து ஜெயம் எவ்ரி டே குரோக்லே அவைகளையே தியானம் செய்கின்றேன் அறிக்கை செய்து கைகளை உயர்த்தி இயேசுவே கேடுகம் நீரே மகிமன் த லிப்ட் ஆஃப் மை ஹேர் 
செய்பவன் கேடகம் கேடகம் நீரே மகிமையும் நீரே தலைநிமிர செய்பவன் கேடகம் இயேசுவே கேடகம் நீரே மகிமையும் நீரே தலைநிமிர from every pain from every sorrow கேடகம் நீரே மகிமையும் நீ from every situation நிமிர செய்பவன் நீரே தலைநிமிர செய்பவன் thank you தலைநிமிர செய்பவன் one last time yesuve thale nimir seibavani re yesuve nimir seibavani re may the lord lift up your head thank you lord who is the king of glory the lord he is the king of glory the one who lifts up our heads katra yesu kribayum பிதாவாகிய தேவனின் பரிசு தாவின் ஐக்கியமோடு இன்றும் என்றும் வாழ்நாள் முழுவதும் இருப்பதாக எல்லோரும் சேர்ந்த ஆத்மாவே கத்திரை சோத்ரி உள்ளமே பரிசுத்த நாமத்தை சோத்ரி ஆத்மாவே கத்திரை சோத்ரி கத்த செய்த சகல நன்மைகளையும் மறவாது